not awake, but I like doing speeches in the alpha state. Um, so I'm going to talk about 
the individual members of the Jefferson Airplane in the present tense. I know that a few of them have broke on through to the other side, but musicians' spirits tend to hang around, especially today. So I'm sure that those airplanes who have crossed over are hovering. Okay, first I'm going to speak about the most important member of this band, the drummer. Spencer Dryden, sweet guy, very talented, musical, very musical. Next, um, for a few years now, I've been, uh, I've been yearning for a hot tuna sandwich. And uh, that means hearing Yorma and Jack live. Why? Because they're really good musicians. Okay, there's the rhythm section. Now, on top of that, you put Marty's beautiful ballads, great voice. Um, then there's Paul Kantner, real smart, creative, intuitive. I mean, you know, they morphed into the Jefferson Starship. He must have known that they were going to get a star, you know, on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, finally, um, um, Grace. What a mouth. I, I mean, singer. Uh, very opinionated, which I like. Great pipes. So, yeah, uh, the Doors and the Airplane did uh, do a tour of Europe. I think it was called the West Coast Psychedelic Sound Comes to England or something. And uh, one night, Jim Morrison sat in with the airplane, although I don't think he would remember it because I'm waiting for this truck to pass. <laughs> yeah. So we were equal billing, and, and uh, we opened one night, the airplane opened another night, and uh, this particular night, the airplane opened, and I'm sitting in the dressing room, I, and, and they're playing, and I'm backstage, but... Uh, I don't know that Jim has hopped up there and jumping around. And then through the doorway, I see Jim being carried on a stretcher to an ambulance. And we're about to go on now. Yeah. Oh my God. So back to the airplane. The Jefferson airplane had a big full rock sound with many different voices on top, really strong, really admirable. Uh, you guys completely deserve this star, and I aspire to be the first one to step on your star. Congratulations. very much for those words. We have a few chamber VIPs in the audience today. President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, David Michael Jerome. And my board colleagues, Matt Fritch and Otto Padron. We'd also like to thank the Musicians Institute for their help with today's ceremony. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce administers the Walk of Fame on behalf of the City of Los Angeles. On behalf of Los Angeles City Council President Mitchell Farrell, I'd like to present you with a beautiful resolution on behalf of the city, and I'll come down.
on behalf of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, we now declare today Jefferson Airplane in the, in the city of Hollywood. Yeah. It's now time to introduce three of the members who are accepting on behalf of the group. Yorma, Jack, and Grace. Good grief. Yeah, who knew? Who knew indeed? So, so yeah, for a guy that's uh, spent his entire life making a fool out of himself and other, in front of other people and gotten really comfortable with it, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than public speaking. So I'm thinking, uh, what, did, what did my wife say? Don't talk too fast, all that stuff. All right, I'll do my best. Anyway, here we go. First of all, we gotta send big thanks out to Jeff Jampol and Associates. None of this would have happened without them. Thanks guys, appreciate it so much. Uh, thanks to John Densmore of The Doors for this introduction. Paul Williams of Crawdaddy collared me around the time of Monterey Pop, told me to listen to your first album. He said it would be the most innovative rock album I would be likely to hear, and he would not be wrong. Thanks brother, appreciate it for that one. When I think about our old band, Jefferson Airplane, at moments like this, I think of what I consider to be the core members from those early Halcyon years. Grace Slick, Marty Ballin, Paul Kantner, Spencer Dryden, Jack Cassidy, Signe Anderson also, may she rest in peace, and myself. Marty, Paul, Spencer, and Signe are sadly gone, but they will not be forgotten. It's a blessing to be still standing here with longtime friends, Grace and Jack. We all traveled many miles together making music. Only touring musicians will fully appreciate this bond. It's one that can never be broken. Today, we're practically around the corner from the Mark Twain Hotel on Wilcox, where the band spent many nights before recording at the RCA studios at Sunset and Ivor a lifetime ago. LA was a home away from home as we recorded back then, and in an odd way, it is still home. All those early times have become zeitgeist for me today. We were all young together in those moments and were fortunate not only to make music, to make music that the world would hear as an artist who could want for more. My father was an Angelina. We grew up in Lincoln Heights and he and the rest of the Calcutans who came west a century ago were buried here. Mom is too. Dad complained about my choice of an occupation early in my career. He would grudgingly allow that I had a real time, a real job as time would unfold. This star would probably put a wry smile on his face and gain some approval for affirmative choices made by his sometimes errant son. Finally, if all the gods have aligned in today's wired world, my wife Vanessa, daughter Izzy, and son Zach are watching the old man and his cohorts receive this honor from a continent away. I love you guys. This is all an honor that would have been unthinkable when I was young, but as an 81-year-old man, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Good work, you all know. Well, lower the microphone. How's this? Everybody's a director here in Hollywood. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Jeff and staff and, and the unbelievably, unbelievable positioning of our, our, our star here in front of the Music Institute. I think it's apropos. I was reminded of when we came down here in 1965. I think we might have even even rehearsed once in the the uh, AFM Music Hall, which is quite different than this facility we're looking at to my left here. But um, as I look around, oh, 
Oh, that's right. We have a drummer over here. We have a bass player. We have a guitar player. We have a singer. Hey, you want to start a band? It's not too late. In any case, when I came here in 1965, I think in November, December, it was raining constantly. It was raining so much, I think they had over, I looked it up on, on Google that there was like 30 inches of rain within in 40 days or something. And it was really like the Hollywood movies up on, on the hillsides where people carrying signs, it's the end of the world, Hollywood, the end of the world is coming because of all the rain. And we could certainly use some of that today. But, but times were changing in those days where the music industry was used to a leader side man or a studio musicians doing all the recording on the records you heard. And for us, it was really the beginning of a, of a, a sea change. Bands were forming for, for uh, coming from all different backgrounds, certainly the Jefferson Airplane. Paul Cantor come from a folk background, Yorma from a folk background, I'd come from an R&B background. Spencer Dryden, that John pointed out, he was a jazz drummer. And that's what brought such unique rhythm patterns to the Jefferson Airplane sound. Marty had been, Marty had been in the early 60s, a solo performer that had recorded here in Los Angeles. So we came in as a band, got signed as a band, all equal members, sharing everything, including the fact that when we first came to Los Angeles, we had no place to stay. We stayed on people's sofas and couches and the floors and, uh, and rather inexpensive hotels. And um, that recording that we did over at Sunset and Ivar at RCE Records, that was the only way we, most of us in those days could get our hands on recording equipment to even find out how we sounded from live performances. And so it was really the beginning of a, whole, of a whole world. But in Los Angeles, coming down here, there was this whole scene going on, the Whiskey A Go Go, the Troubadour, where Yorm and I are playing at McCabe's uh, down on Pico in the next two nights. Cheap, cheap plug, thank you. And in any case, we come down to Los Angeles and we take the PSA plane, PSA down into Burbank for $12 a flight. No security. You jump on the plane the last minute, you pay while you're on the plane, you come down to LA. It was a fantastic time. In any case, there was a lot of memories associated with those early days in Los Angeles. And I find myself now a 34 year resident of Los Angeles. And um, my late wife, Diana Balfour Cassidy, once told me, she said, Jack, you've made, you've made your mark on the wall, because we were talking about different people's careers and whatnot. And, uh, and right now, I notice, and I can say to you, Diana, it looks like I've made my mark in the pavement. And so, uh, it's something, something I never would have imagined at the time. So it's truly a special day, and I spank, uh, thank all the special people in my life today, Deborah, and of course my little guy, um, Chester. And uh, uh, God bless those who aren't with us, as well as those that keep trying to expand and, and nurture the, the beliefs that make us all better people. And celebrating a variety that is offered here in this great city of diversity, Los Angeles. Thank you very much. I'll tell you why, is Jack and Yorma are actual, what I call, real musicians. I'm a screw-off who got lucky. Now, my mother was a singer, so I went to see Jefferson Airplane play in a little club called The Matrix in San Francisco. And I looked up there, you know, the idiocy of youth, and I thought, oh, that's way more fun than I'm having right now. I think I can do that. So I uh, formed a band with my husband at the time, his brother, who wrote Somebody to Love. And uh, it turns out 
that I did have the right voice for rock and roll. It's very loud, and <laughs> I didn't have any trouble singing over people. The audience could talk all they want. <laughs> but I've got to say I want to give thanks to a friend of mine. She doesn't want me to mention her name, so I won't. Who, at, literally, I wouldn't be here today. A couple months ago, she saved my life. I went into septic shock, and uh, she uh, literally saved my life, hauled me off to St. John's, and God bless her. Um, this hat belonged to Paul Kantner, so at least his DNA is here today. Yeah. You know, yeah. If it was law and order, they could scrape it to find out whether or not he'd killed anybody or anything. The thing, the thing um, that I wanted to bring up that I liked about uh, Jefferson Airplane, very often it's what tears man's apart. And it might have done that to us after a while, too. But I liked the smorgasbord effect. Um, I'm Norwegian, so we like buffets and smorgasbords. Jack and Yorma didn't sound anything like Paul. Paul didn't, Paul's songs didn't sound anything like mine. Mine didn't sound like Marty's. So you got this long board of stuff, and it's all different. And I love that. I don't, like right now I paint. I don't, and it's all different. I don't have a style. It's, I love that. And that's what I liked about this band. And I was sort of sorry that that is partially what broke it up for a while. But we got back together. You can't, you can't tear that apart. That's too tight of a union to uh, rip apart, I think, anyway. And I want to thank all the people who made this possible. There's one sitting right there. He's very short. You, won't, you, you can't miss him. He's the shortest guy here. <laughs> and and uh, Jack and Yorma, thank them. Thanks Spencer Dryden, who's not here, Paul Kantner, and Marty Ballin. Marty didn't want some other singer coming on, but he did pretty well with not punching me in the face, you know. <laughs> None of the guys I sang with ever wanted uh, anybody else to have, but they, they were accommodating. Uh, th this is kind of silly in the face of what's going on in the world, okay? There are much more important things going on. But I still love it. Thank you. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. Thank you all. It's now time to unveil the star. Let's hear it again for Jefferson Airplane.